Well, hey there, I'm Emma from Mmm English. I'm here to answer each and every one of your questions today. So stay tuned. Hmm, so which one is it then? Each or every? It's pretty easy to confuse these two words. They look similar, they sound similar, <laughs> but they're not always used in the same way. So in this lesson, we'll go over the subtle and important differences between these two words. We'll talk about the different situations where you would use one or the other. And of course, we'll practice a little bit together later in the lesson. You know that I love to make my lessons for you very practical, so we'll get to that later on. Before we get started, a little reminder to turn on the subtitles if you need to, just down there. I write subtitles for every lesson on the mm English channel, so you can turn them on at any time. And some of my amazing students here help me to translate these lessons into their own native language so that more people can share and learn from them as well. So if you're up for the challenge to add subtitles in your native language, there's a link in the description that will help you to do that. Your name is gonna get shown in the description too, as a thank you. Each and every can both be used with singular nouns. Every day, every house, each person, each cat, all of these nouns are singular, right? It's just one person or one thing. So the words each and every can be used with singular nouns that are part of a group. But there is a subtle difference. When we use each, it emphasizes or it puts more attention on the individual, the one person or the one thing. Each person who came to the dinner party bought a dish. More than one person came to the dinner party. In fact, there was a whole group of people who came to the dinner party. But each singular individual person bought a dish or a plate of food to share, right? So he bought a dish, she bought dessert, she bought a salad, he bought some cheese and biscuits, right? So everyone has brought something. Now let's compare this to every. Every refers to a group of individual objects or people as one group altogether, right? The attention is on the group as a whole. So everyone who came to the dinner party bought a dish. So a group of people came to the dinner party and all of these people brought a dish. But by using Every, I'm putting emphasis on the group as a whole, right? Everybody here bought a dish. Now, in many situations, just like my example about the dinner party, each and every can be used interchangeably with just a small difference in meaning, right? You could use either of them. And the difference is very subtle. But let's look at a few more examples to help make that clear. Every business owner is clever. So I'm putting all business owners together in one group there, and I'm making a generalization about the group, all business owners. And I'm saying that as a group, all of those business owners are clever. Each teacher at our school is creative. So here I'm talking about the individual teachers at our school. Each one of them is creative. Not all teachers in general, not the group together, but each teacher separately at the school is creative. Before we move on, I wanna point out something really important, something you might have been thinking about already. But did you notice in my earlier examples that I wrote every one instead of every one? So if you wanna talk about a group of people as a whole, every person, it's correct to use every one or everybody, right? Every person is everyone or everybody. Now, every one, written in two words, it actually puts more attention on the individuals in the group. And so it becomes a synonym closer to each, right? Let's think of an example. Um, at school, did you have a teacher that you were kind of scared of? Like imagine them saying, 
every one of you needs to arrive at 7 a.m. tomorrow, right? The emphasis is on the individual. But if they said, everyone needs to arrive at 7 a.m. tomorrow, then the emphasis is on the group, right? And it's a little less scary. It's a subtle difference, but it's quite powerful in meaning. Notice as well that even though we're talking about a group of people, everyone and everybody use a singular verb form because we're talking about the group as a singular thing, right? Not all of the individuals in it, but we're talking about the group, right? A nice trick to check if you should be using everyone or every one is to see if everybody works in that sentence because then every one with one word is also correct. If everybody doesn't work in the sentence then every one with two words is the correct option, right? Let's look at an example. I called everybody to invite them over, right? We can say I called everyone to invite them over. I called everybody of my friends to invite them over. I called every one or each one of my friends to invite them over. So let's do a quick recap before we move on. We use each and every with singular nouns. Each puts more emphasis on the individual within the group and every puts our attention on the group as a whole. Got it? Good. There's still some important things that you need to know. So when you're talking about exactly two things, you can use each. Not when you're talking about three or four or ten things, only when you're talking about two. I've got an earring in each ear. I've got two ears. So I can use each to talk about my ears, but I can't use every, all right? I have an earring in every ear. It sounds really quite strange, like how many ears do you have? Earlier I told you that each and every are usually used with singular nouns, but there's a little exception or a rule that we've got to talk about here. Every can't be used with plural nouns, but each can be used with plural nouns with a small change in form. To use each with plural nouns, you need to add the word of. Each cat has a red collar. We can't say each cats have a red collar, but we can say each of the cats has a red collar. Now, there's not much difference in meaning between these two correct sentences, but it's important to notice that we do include the article the here. It's really important, right? You must use it unless you're using the plural determiners or pronouns like us or them or these or those, we don't need to use the article then, right? So let's look at a couple of examples of how they're used. Each of us won a prize. Each of the kids was given a balloon. Oh, did Sarah make each of those? It's really important there that we are using our finger to point at what we're talking about. Another useful thing to keep in mind is that every is more commonly used with time expressions. She visits her grandma every Thursday. Rebecca is on social media so much, she checks her Facebook every 10 minutes. Now, actually, each wouldn't be wrong in either of these sentences. You could use each with many of these time expressions, but every is just more common and it usually sounds a little more natural. The difference is very subtle. Each Monday at 2 p.m. I have a meeting. That's fine. Every Monday at 2 p.m. I have a meeting. It's a little better. It sounds a little more natural. So right now it's time to see if you've been paying attention through this lesson because we're about to practice. So I want you to see if you can complete each of the sentences that you see up here with the right word. You have to think about the subtle differences. So let's assume that the emphasis is on the individual cup here. Well, so each would be correct because of the singular noun. What about this one? Yep, every because Saturday morning is a time expression. What about this one? Yep, 
It has to be each, doesn't it? Because there are exactly two wrists. Perfect. I guess that has to be every, right? Because we're talking about the group as a whole. And so when we're talking about everyone as a group, we need to use every. All right, in this last example here, let's keep our attention on the house as a whole, okay? Our emphasis and our attention is on the whole house, not the individual rooms inside. So every would be perfect. But of course you could use each if you were emphasizing each of the individual rooms. All right. I do have one more final question for you. Do you remember at the start of this video when I said that I'm here to answer each and every one of your English questions? So in that sentence, which option is the best option? It's a trick question because you could use either, okay? But you can also use them together like this. The phrase each and every is really common in spoken English and it puts all of the emphasis on the whole group but every single person in the group. So it's like a combination, right? And it's a fixed expression that you'll see from time to time and you'll see both of these words together. And that's perfectly acceptable, especially when you are trying to emphasize that each and every person in the group is important. So before I say goodbye to each and every one of you, I want you to tell me in the comments if there are any other English words like each and every that confuse you a little that you'd like me to explain more because I'll be making more videos just like this one to help you understand some of the more subtle differences between English words and help you to sound a little more natural as you're using English. Now, make sure you subscribe to my channel by clicking that button right down there and then come and check out this lesson right here. I think you're going to love it. I'll see you in there.